Well, hello everyone. I hope everybody's having a very nice Saturday and that you will have a very nice weekend. And I would say good morning, but it's not morning. It's actually, it's 3.30 in the afternoon. starting our supper and I have decided to make Italian meatloaf but again we are grain free so let me give you the ingredients for the meatloaf a pound of ground beef preferably grass-fed ground beef one yellow onion a quarter cup of tomato sauce one egg whisk three quarter cup of almond flour teaspoon of basil, thyme, and parsley, and then salt and pepper to taste. And right now, as you can see, I have my onions sauteing on the stove, and they said that once they're translucent, then I will add it to my meat mixture and all those ingredients that I just read off to you. Mix it together, and I'll put it in a loaf pan and begin baking it. But there's also a sauce that goes on top of it. And for the sauce, it's basically the same spices, the basil, thyme, parsley, but this time you use three quarters of a cup of tomato sauce. And it says that you will add your sauce on top of the meatloaf. You'll put it on top of the meatloaf once your meatloaf's done. So, but I'm gonna, I have to heat all that stuff up until it's nice and bubbly on the stove. So I'll show you and uh, I hope maybe we can do this together. As you can see, I am just roasting up my my onions here. It said to use a tablespoon or two of olive oil and get them till they're nice and tender and translucent. And I did want to mention that the recipe called for one roasted red pepper diced. And I did not have a red pepper, nor was I sure what they meant by roasted red pepper. So I just added one eighth of a teaspoon of red pepper seasoning. It looks like this. I figured that it would um, at least give the flavor. Okay, so here we are. We are ready to add the onions into the, our meat bowl here. And then it just says to add all of the ingredients that was listed off for the meatloaf. So that's going to be my one egg that I've already whisked up and a quarter of a cup of tomato sauce. I guess I should use this. Yeah, that works a little better. And our three quarters of a cup of almond flour and then our spices teaspoon of basil teaspoon of lime of thyme and of parsley then it says to add salt and pepper to your own taste so i am actually just going to add a half a teaspoon of the salt and a quarter of a teaspoon of the pepper. Then it says, using your hands, mix it all up. I think I will start with a spoon to try to get it not quite so goopy. And then I'll move to my hands. And this is my first time making this, so I have no idea what it's supposed to look like or what it's going to taste like, but it sounded good, and I enjoy meatloaf. And, you know, for a person that is not going to have any grains, this was like the next best thing. Now, I have already preheated my oven to 400, 
and it says that I'm just going to put this into a loaf pan and it will cook for 35 to 40 minutes. I will probably, I will definitely use a meat thermometer to make sure that it's been cooked to the right, you know, temperature because that doesn't sound like very long for a meat loaf. But then again, it is only a pound, so. All right, I guess I should have moved that so you can see that better. Sorry about that. All right, I will go ahead and I will first wash my hands. Then I will put it in the oven and I will get back to you when that's done. And that did not take very long to get hot at all. So I'm just going to, oh, that pan's hot. Go ahead and pour this over it. And it's just supposed to sit for a few minutes. And then it says to enjoy. So I will let it sit for a few minutes and I'll let you know how it tastes. And here's our dinner. I tasted the meatloaf. It was very good. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to call my husband out and we're going to have dinner and I will talk to you after a while. Good evening. I hope everybody has had a wonderful and a beautiful weekend. And tonight we are going to be continuing in Philippians chapter 3 and we will be reading verses 15 and 16 and I will be reading from the New King James Version. Therefore let us as many as are mature have this mind and if in anything you think otherwise God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. You know, God wants all believers to finish strong. And Paul wraps up this section by writing that mature believers should be chasing hard after Christ. They must be striving for the goal and pressing toward the finish line. He also writes that not everyone is mature yet, but they are to continue in the race and God will reveal this truth to them. And remember, God uses trials to mold us into the people he wants us to be. Like in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, where it says, after you have suffered for a little while, God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Just look at an athlete that disciplines themselves for years. Have you ever watched an Olympic race? I'm sure you have. You know, there is no way that these athletes could endure such grueling preparation unless they had one goal in mind, and that was to win the medal, to win the race and the amount of work and the amount of pain that their bodies had to endure as they prepared to become stronger and stronger. And our focus and perseverance should be like that of an athlete as we look to the end of our race and focus on finishing well. Christ's death paid for us the glorious prize that awaits us. At the end, it's just too priceless to trivialize by losing momentum, dropping behind, 
or worse yet, failing to finish the race at all. So Paul, the exhorter, tells us to stay in the race. And we stay in the race and hold on to what is true by first being in God's word. You know, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 tells us, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation. He's not saying that we grow into it. No, he's saying to grow up just like a baby. They grow, they get bigger. And another way is through prayer. Pray for your own maturity and pray for others as well. And a third way is by following godly examples. Paul had even told the Corinthians to be imitators as him, just like we were told, 1 Corinthians 4.16. Yet in these two verses in Philippians, we are presented with a very powerful message. You see, our daily life as Christians is all about maturing in Christ. Paul was already mature, yet he desired to continue moving forward in spiritual growth. To keep on reaching forward, pressing, pressing on, keeping on, to keep on keeping on. But you know, it's also important that we cultivate, cultivate the right attitudes as we grow in Christ. We should never deviate from developing a deeper love relationship with Christ and maturing in our understanding and usefulness. And our attitudes, they can be the determining factor of how we're going to finish that race. Because there's good attitudes and there's bad attitudes. You see, Paul had come to understand that anyone who has come to be mature in faith knows what Christianity is, must also recognize the discipline and the effort and even the agony that can come with the Christian life. And that if anyone is an honest person, that God will make it plain to them that one can never relax their effort or lower their standard, but must press toward the goal until the end. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And let's press on to finish the race well for the glory of our Lord and Savior, who has redeemed us completely. God bless and good night.